Mil tady přeci. OK, it's going. Uh, so, good evening everyone and good morning if you are watching us on the other hemisphere. So, today live will be a short coverage of the technical issues. So, I'm together with Shimon. And yes, we would like to start uh, from, uh, from the questions that you are sending us through emails. Why we are not publishing um, new Maybe. files? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So, as you might have heard, there is a thing called patent trolling. So, the aim that we have is that we reach the stage where people can actually use the things we are trying to come up with. Either use it for some kinds of research purposes or, or some small, I know, in-house productions or whatever. We will not be able to reach that goal if somebody just goes there and starts patenting what we want to show. So before we are able to you know, give you or give everybody um, the, um, the, 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 the access to, to the files we came up with, uh, we have to make sure that nobody's going to patent that. I mean, it sounds very crazy if you don't know details about those laws and regulations. I know them just very roughly. We have lawyers that are helping us with this. But I can tell you a story of a friend of mine. There is a super clever guy in, around here in Krakow in Poland. He's known as Jarek Duda. And he's the guy that invented a very clever algorithm. And then he made it open source. And then it was patented by some company. I will not give a name right now. Um, and then, you know, it was like four years, I mean, some years of, of legal struggle to make sure that what he made open source in the first place remains open source after some company was trying, you know, to, to do something about that. So our hesitation comes from, from those two sources. The first one is what I just covered, the fact that we want to make sure that if we make it open source, it remains open source. And we want to make sure that, you know, if we make it open source, uh, it doesn't end up being produced by some company and, you know, sold by super high amounts of money. We want to deliver the goal of giving access to knowledge and to skills to people who need them the most and who didn't have nice opportunities as we had to, you know, just build enough expertise when, when, when the times were not so tough as they are right now. So please be patient. We will deliver what we have promised. But let me just tell you about the second reason why we have some slowness and hesitations on those. So you might have heard several times that we, we, we mentioned the, the, the things like, you know, whether the product or whether the design is safe for people. You probably remember this. I, I bring it to the picture so you can keep it as you have it. You probably remember this. This is... It, it, stop moving. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, you probably remember this. This is prototype. I mean, this is the first approach we, we took, which is nice and colorful and, you know, makes nice noises and all that stuff. Um, yeah, you could use it for some things. Yes, it can be um, useful for, for certain applications, but this is not what you need for COVID. So uh, we want to make sure that before we publish something... Um, we want to make sure that this is what is needed and we want to make sure that the quorum of doctors says, yeah, that's what we need and they have no doubts uh, so that we have no doubts so that we don't end up in a situation that we try to help and in, in a result we harm. So please be patient. The, the hesitation doesn't come from, you know, us being unnice guys and just wanting to have, keep all that, that work for ourselves. Um, we want to make sure that everything goes smoothly. We want to make sure that, you know, with all the regulations are met. We want to make sure that um, that there is no patent trolling happening around. Uh, so, yeah, we, we want to continue with that. Uh, we've talked with several groups of, of doctors. We, you, you might have seen some, some news coverage. I will not be trying to go through all the surnames. The, the list is quite long. Um, there are impressive doctors who are consulting um, our approaches. First nice thing that comes from this is that they nod their wise heads and they say, yeah, mm -hmm, that's the approach. So they compare us. Could you pass me the, the ambu bag? Yeah. Sorry. So uh, that, that's yeah, ambu bag. We have came better prepared. So, you know, there was 
this particular conversation we had late last week um, with one, I mean, with, with several super clever doctors, but one was asking tricky questions. Now, the tricky questions guy, um, a professor of anesthesiology and, and some other titles as well, a very experienced guy, I mean, he, he I think he didn't really know which one of those projects are we when we started the conversation. And then he, he, he went on saying what he would expect from this last resort help of ventilation tools. Uh, and then, you know, he, he was describing the device and I was just calmly listening. And then when he finished, I was like, yeah, we have it. And then we bring to the picture uh, device mark three. Um, let me show you something about those ambu bags. I mean, when you when you squeeze it, yeah, you make it you you, you make the air go through. But when you, you at some point you have to stop squeezing, you have to release it so that it. I, I show it from the side. Um, it takes some time to recover. So so that means uh, you have an under pressure in your lungs. Let's let's get let let mm. let's get it slowly because if okay. you do it the proper way. Don't take shortcuts that make it very clear. So you compress it, and then there is a moment when you don't have a way to deliver air to the patient. Let's say that this moment happens when your patient is inhaling. Um, even if you have some kind of accumulator, even if you have some kind of um, positive uh, expiratory and expiratory pressure valve at the end, um, if there is a suction from the patient, you will not have you will not have um, air being delivered. You have to be able to be delivering, in some cases, air with the rate of even 200 liters per minute. There is no way that you can keep at the given moment, at any given point in time, possibility to do that with with this whatever compressed thing you are having. Now, uh, the only way you can deal with that is that you have some kind of a continuous source of air, uh, which could be, you know, high pressure tank sitting on the rooftop of your hospital or a turbine. We opted for a second case because, you know, some hospitals being improvised don't have rooftops strong enough because they are made in tents or something. So you, they, they just don't have these big facilities for air production. So we have a turbine on site in, inside our device. So to sum up, so this device, so that the message for other groups who are working on uh, ventilators, emergency ventilators, the pandemic ventilator, don't do that really, it doesn't help for COVID patients, so, um, but it sucks. No, no, it, I mean, it depends on which dialect of English you speak, but I think it blows, not sucks. Okay, so yeah, it blows. So, <laughs> so don't, don't go that way. Um, yeah, the same, the, same, the same reason is why this is not so useful for COVID. Because in COVID, you have to make sure that you deliver the air whenever the patient is inhaling. You have to make sure that you are delivering air. You know, but we came up with one nice use for the pre prototype from version number two. The, 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 the idea is that we need something to calibrate our system with. And we, you know, we, we disassembled the, the second version a little bit. And then we took some half finished 3D printer. Let's show it to those guys. And we use this as our, you know, phantom. When we don't have enough time to, to go to this medical center where they have these fancy phantoms that we are sometimes working with, we have this phantom on site. We are compressing this lung to imitate the patient breathing, which comes much nicer than, you know, the, you know these green things, right? Yeah, they're lungs. Um, yeah, they, they are nice if you want to show the beep up mode or something. But we want to be as robust as possible in a CPAP mode. This is where we put all our concentration on right now. So it works much better if we calibrate everything on this simulated lung with, with the, you know, the version number two. They don't give you much benefit um, in, in COVID. As I said, you have to make sure that the, when patient is inhaling, the, um, the under pressure he creates is being met by the air delivery to his mouth. I'm being sent some other questions from from our friend who is watching through the channel. Uh, yeah, th this is a question we partially asked. Why is that not useful for COVID? Because you need to be able to deliver the air at any instant, whenever the patient is needing that air. And maybe we should talk a little bit about the intubation as well? Yes, absolutely, because that's a, that's a vital uh, question, the vital thing. 
why we are making non-invasive ventilation uh, yep. device and mm -hmm. not a professional device for yeah, the professional. incubation. Professional is a tricky word in this context. That, that, that's right. <laughs> we, are also to professional keep, we are trying to keep the highest level of professionality available if you work that fast. So let me tell you why we decided upon discussion with doctors not to go for the intubation right now. So, you know, in principle, intubation is not that hard. I mean, you just take your BPAP. It's actually simpler than, uh, than the triggered BPAP. Because when you have your patient who is not having his own respiratory action, you just take your, you just take your BPAP, you have a precise, precise timing, and you just, you know, you just inject at the known moments. Everything is so predictable. Everything is so simple. Um, it's actually harder to make a decent non-invasive uh, than basic invasive. The thing is that it's not the um, it's not the ventilator that is a um, that is the um, that is a bottleneck for for intubation. When you have your patient being intubated, you need to have a lot of you know stuff taking care of him. You need to have a right cocktail of chemicals flowing through his veins with those fancy syringes um, that make him not having his breathing action, that make him sleep and make him not die. You have to have a lot of extra equipment, in, you know, how do you call it? Uh, the dialysis. Dialysis. Yeah, I think that's the right. English word, yeah. So uh, there are all extra uh, facilities and constraints you have, to, you have to meet. You have much higher load on the medical staff. Uh, if you try to intubate your patients. And what, Instead, what, you, what you need more, you need really a lot of uh, well-trained medical staff. Yeah, and this is that, actually that, a that, procedure. That's, that's, yeah, I mean, yes, I, I've been is. trying to play with that on a phantom. Uh, it's sort of funny if you do it on a plastic man. It's not funny if you do it on a light man. So if you don't have enough training, or your training is not fresh enough, you can actually, you know, remove all his teeth in the meantime. Uh, Actually, the phantoms that we were working with, they, they were having, you know, the Velcro connecting their uh, teeth uh, inside the mouth. So you could remove it on the Velcro and have it easier for training. This is a hard procedure. This is not simple. You have to do it super clean. You have to, you know, maintain all nice levels of, of, of professionality on that. And in those places where people are stretched thin so much that they don't have enough ventilators for those who need them, they already have problems on that front, those fronts as well. Uh, people who are, of course, qualified medical people, are quali but are being qualified for something different, like for different kinds of medical procedures, they have to, you know, quickly learn how to do that. So forcing them to go for invasive on every on everyone would be like a nightmare. They, it's not a bottleneck. The, the ventilator is not a bottleneck in most places that we talked with. In those places that they actually lack ventilators, uh, they lack some other things as well. Instead, you might go for non-invasive. Now, non-invasive gives you several nice options. First of all, um, you don't have to sedate your patient. So if your patient responds well to uh, non-invasive, and it depends on many factors, one of them is genetics of the patient, another of them is just how lucky the guy is or how unlucky he is, there are very many com things that come into play. But anyway, if, you, if your patient is lucky enough to be good on non-invasive, you keep him on non-invasive because it puts less load on everyone who is taking care of him. The only thing you have to make sure is that you don't miss the moment when non-invasive is not enough for him. It's going to happen for some people, which is depending on the place, depending on genetics, depending on age and very many factors that differ from place to place. Um, and are not fully understood by now. Um, you, some people will not require uh, invasive. Some people will be about to die if you don't give them invasive at the right time. Uh, so our device is also providing you with extra information, um, digested in a way that makes it easier for uh, that makes it easier for staff to to realize that they need that they need um, to intubate the guy before it's too late because many people just die because intubation was too late i see some other questions coming up let me just quickly read them through so the question is um what's uh, the I highest see. flow rate of our blower based ventilator uh, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question because it depends how you measure 
if you measure the way yes. that, I mean, there are several ways how you could be measuring. For example, you could be measuring uh, how much you get just at the blower or how much you get if you don't have your horses connected. Anyway, if we measure with horses, if we measure with all the equipment, we are able to deliver up to 250 with what we have inside uh, right now. Uh, we are uh, changing versions from time to time. We are actually right now, I, I, I'm not sure if it already started printing, um, but we are now um, going to experiment over the weekend with a new turbine, which would have higher maximum air throughput. Um, possibly, I don't remember the numbers right now, but it could have been something like 350 of a maximum. Of course, this liters, is not liters, uh, liters per, minute, per minute. Liters per minute. Sorry, I, I might be forgetting units because I take them for granted in this context. No, it's not. Uh, liters per minute and centimeters of water if I talk about pressure. Sorry if I forget about them. I, I know it's important. Anyway, um, if we have um, 350, it is not that you just you know push that much into the lungs. You have to have some kind of overhead in case of some leakage, in case of very sudden inhale so that you react quickly enough. Um, it produces extra difficulties in the control algorithm, but it looks like we have it under control. There okay. is another question. So there's another question from Paolo. What are the medical devices used in, on the prototype? So uh, the main fix, I may show you, this is the basic medical device that we are using. So that's a hose, medical hose. And we have also some filters. They are uh, on the other side, they are all reconnected. Yeah. yeah, they are connected here, the medical filters. And now, well, we could be yes. also discussing the mask, because mask also should be a that's medical a, device. That's an anesthetic mask. That's not the yeah. mask that you would be using. Yeah, uh, that's, that's only for I, a couple of, yeah, you can, you can use it for a couple uh, of hours. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, this is, I know it. I mean, I, I already got some, some kinds of... Let, let, let me show the guys uh, the mask that you may be using, which is not a medical device, but it's much more helpful. That's a scuba diving mask. Or you can use um, a kind of the helmet that you put well, on your... The old prototype. The old, yeah, that was the old prototype. The other one is in the car. That you, that you put on your head and you have a patient like for uh, two or three weeks even sitting in the in the full full head yeah helmet, um, which is very comfortable yeah the one that we have right now the helmet we have right now is not by definition a medical device just yet uh, there is a so shortage of those um, yeah, in the international yes, market that, but there are right. so there are some factories that produce it since i think something like 10 years i think they are in italy if i remember well but there are also some people including us who are trying to come up with with um helmets that fit the standard equipment and trying to get through with the certification. So, so to sum up, uh, it's easier and quicker to build a device if you are using hose, maybe helmet, maybe mask, uh, and filters, because they are sterile uh, yeah. and that's quite important. Yeah. If contaminated, you throw out the filters and you clean um, or you throw out as well. Or, or, or you throw the out, in, indeed, you throw out the hose. Well, if you want to be very, very detailed on that, there are also those pressure measuring hoses. Um, we, 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 we played with the medical hoses as well. The, the one that you use for, uh, how do you call it when you put the, the needle in the vein and then you have your bag with liquid dripping in the vein? I mean, there is this standard thing, I forgot the name in English. But you can use those hoses as well, they fit. Um, and also the syringe filters for um, protecting um, pressure sensors from contamination. Um, we are working on making our device a medical device. This is super hard. And I have to say that this is super frustrating. And this is what we've been doing since like one week or something. Um, we are trying to go through all this paperwork and all those procedures in order to, 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 to reach the stage where we have, um, where we can call it a medical device. So, and uh, to, to answer fully your question, Paolo, um, is it possible to print and buy on stores all the components? Yes. And that is wonderful message ah, because yeah, I, I think the, uh, you didn't read the question yet. Sorry. <laughs> or it needs a medical device asking, along. The, the yes. guy is asking, so Paolo is asking if I get it right, 
is it possible um, to do it without medical equipment? And the answer is yes. Yes, it is. Though it's kind of risky because if you don't have your equipment being medical or behind those um, filters, if you don't have devices being medical, uh, you have to really know what you're doing. So there are, we've been experimenting with some improvised kinds of hosses that you could be playing with. So for example, could you move the camera Yes, down? so we are, we are talking about that, this one. Yeah, right? you, you, you could, for example, replace that with so-called special hose or a cable routing hose, depending on how it's called in your country. Um, so there is a way to do without that. The same goes for filters. There are some other types of filters that sort of give you the same quality, but they are not certified because, you know, going through certification is expensive. So if you know what you are doing and you know the local market well, you could be finding equipment that is not certified but would meet the requirements, but you do that only in a grave situations. So you have absolute shortage of the proper medical staff and the doctor with all the responsibility says, well, it's a war, so we don't use the medical things because we don't have them. And using something is better than not using anything. But this is super hard decision that's going to be taken boots on the ground. It's not something that we're going to advise you to do. We might, at the best case, tell you, well, what are the possibilities we see. But we advise you to use the medical stuff as long as you have it on all fronts. There are some new questions. So there are new questions. Uh, so I hope that that answers the question. Uh, so the questions, uh, once our ventilator is validated in our country. So before Let's the valid, the before the, I've heard, uh, before the I valid, <laughs> so go ahead. Um, so, uh, so Lambert, before the validation, we need to go through the uh, clinical test process. And that takes a couple of weeks. And this is absolutely vital. It's crucial for the project. Because after the positive result of the clinical test, so uh, under supervision of doctors in hospital or one or two or three hospitals, we'll be sure that it's safe for patient and that helps patient. The question was leading in another way, I think. So, Sorry, yeah, and, and Sorry then, to then, you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Then we'll then we'll go uh, for the process of certification. But certification in Poland and in developed countries it's quite long and costly. Um, in other countries, and therefore, it might be easier. So I don't know where you're from. Uh, so please write it, and maybe in your country will be easier. So maybe, but I, I, maybe I, if you if you share look if you share the files, maybe in his country, uh, he will be able to. Let, to let, let me certify. answer. Yeah. I, I think I read the question in a different way than Shimon read that. Sorry. Um, and we, with the change, the change in materials. Uh, so I, I I was reading the question in the following way: What happens if um, we we deliver the design, we give it to other people? And we tell you do this and you do that and you do it from that material and you do this from that material. And somebody somewhere having, for example, a shortage of this or that changes the design or changes the material being used. Now, that's a hard part. We try to design our device in a way that makes it very little, uh, that, that makes it as robust as possible also for substitutions. So, for example, we are trying to see what happens if you substitute sensors with some other similar sensors or other stuff. But, you know, there is no way for us, we've been trying to find solutions, but there is no way for us to, you know, make sure that whatever you find on site in your country is good enough. We just, you know, it, it builds on trust. We just trust that you will try to do the best you can. We see that there are some very difficult countries. We actually got the answer. The Lambert who asked the question is from Rwanda. This is, I mean, as for the history of that country, as far as I've read recently, the country got way better than the history books from recent times that I've read, which were terrifying. So I keep fingers crossed and I hope that you have access to all the stuff you're going to need. Um, but it's not given. I mean, it, it might be that you don't. So we trust that you're going to do your best. Also, we will do our best to advise you. Um, but at some places, that's go not going to be possible to do those things with optimal materials. You're just going to need to use what you have. Um, and this is going to be a tough choice you're going to do with your doctors. 
we will try to help you find the solutions that's gonna that, that's gonna be as good as possible but there is no way for us to you know to, to find a solutions that's gonna work everywhere we just try to find solutions that gonna be robust for substitutions and we try to find the solutions that gonna be as universal as we can think of that's the best we can do and let's hope that's going to be enough if that's not going to be enough the process is going to be ongoing i mean we try to certify it here and then and then let's see what happens uh, the question about motor let me just read it uh, so which motor we have in our ventilator and said brush or brushless we have brushless we've test also brushed version but it's brushless uh, is so there way are, better there, yeah, there so. are two problems about uh, brushed motors uh, one of them is they are louder and the other one is that that they are less long-lasting. If you have access to brushless motor, you're going to use brushless motor. It's going to be easier for people on site because it's going to be more quiet. It's going to be easier on people who will try to maintain those devices because they will last much longer. It's going to be easier when you'll be putting things together because if you use brush, brushed one, you have to make sure that the dust from brushes doesn't get around. Um, we'll, we will we'll try to help you on, on doing that somehow, but it, it might be difficult on site, whatever, wherever you are. Uh, and then there are going to be um, the problem that brush less motors, even though at the first glance, if you look at them, I might, do I have some on hand? Brush, uh, brush brushless, brushless, brushless. They actually are easier. Well, the brushless, if the brushless want... is somewhere here. No, yeah, <laughs> so, so. But anyway, the, the, the thing yeah. is that even though that they might seem much easier to build, if you would be building one by hand, you would actually find it super hard to build a brushed motor. And if you, if you would be to build it by hand on your own, I mean, the guy that just passed this motor to me have built several of them uh, by hand. There is very little inside. You don't have many moving parts. You don't have those bloody brushes. But you have the um, electrical Revolution. thing, which is a regulator or commutator, depending on what it's called in your country. Um, so um, let's hope that you can get this because it's better. But if you cannot, we've tested that it also works with the other motor. So, so again, this is going to be uh, one of those places where we try to make it design robust as possible. So this, this, this block, this thing here, is what replaces the brushes. It is silicon, it's solid state, as they call it. So it doesn't give you problems of, of aging and all that stuff. Mm, so we try to make a design robust so that you can use both, but we recommend you go for brushless. So the, the Lambert told us that he's from the uh, local Fab Lab run the other. Um, so be patient, uh, we'll get files from us <laughs> very soon. And the next question, the next question is uh, uh, really, really very, I don't know very funny. There is, there is the yes, uh, he's using get... SP32. Um, so what we, what we use right now, I, I'll show you what they're using the prototype. Actually, if you reminded me about something I was about to forget. So um, what we have right now, you might be recognizing, if you are from FabLab, there is a good chance that you have saw this thing. This is what they call a nuclear board. Um, this is STM uh, F1 something. Um, this is what we use right now. We are in the process of moving to slightly bigger one, the one which has more RAM memory for reasons I will not be explaining right now. If you, if, if you are really interested, I, I'll explain that in a very detail. We are moving away from this to a dedicated board. This just came today. Um, we are still missing the piece that should go here, the most important piece, the, this one actually. So this didn't get delivered. I mean, there are there are delivery problems right now. But this the, is optimal. The, the processes are on the stock. So yeah, they are very well stocked. It's yes. just um, a shipping time, uh, which is mm, difficult, even though it's shipped from very short distance. So this is a very standard uh, microcontroller, which is uh, fairly easily be accessible. Um, ESP32 is the, is the chip that Lambert is asking about. Now, this is fairly useful in many applications, but not in this particular one. So what you want to have, uh, I mean, if you are a magician and you know how to write on that very well, I'm not saying that you cannot port what we have to that device. I'm just saying I wouldn't do that. Uh, because if you want to have a quick real-time responses, you don't need to have a lot of computational power. You don't need to have... Mm, these interfaces in, on a low level, um, you just have to have a real time. You have to be calculating in a defined 
times for non non professionals on that. So this is why we opt yes. for this kind of CPUs. Um, they are actually just a little bit more expensive than ESP. And there is another question. Which so I so our, like. our, just just to yeah. sum up, our advice is to use either go ST. I mean, you want to go yes. for for CPUs that are meant for uh, real time control or. You can wait just a little bit until we are absolutely sure that it's safe for patient and you will, yeah, you, actually, will you will receive that. I want to use that moment to say thank you to Maciek Żarnowski who made the bot. Oh, he that, was he, the, the guy was like incredibly quick. I mean uh, the guy is actually really incredibly quick. We worked with him already some time ago, if several times in many many situations. For so many years. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good moment actually to say thank you for our engineer because uh, you can see Shimon here. I'm Shimon, you have. A, Mateusz there? Hello. Yeah, okay. So, but there, so is, there is also loads of people um, on the other side of the internet connection somewhere, here and there, most of them in Poland. So there is a group of people who are working on um, oxygen, um, uh, oxygenation of blood so that it gets well synchronized with our system. There is a group of people who are working on uh, in human interfaces for doctors and for nurses, which is actually super important as well. The, I mean, I, I don't want to go through all the names because the list is super long. It's over, oh yes, uh, we have uh, like a 10 or 12 engineers or, or even more right now. So there I've lost the count. But yeah, I've, I've lost the count already as well. Uh, so thank you guys, you are doing absolutely amazing job and this is super quickly done and we are not copying other solutions. And that's really, really the, unique. The, before we go to my favorite question, <laughs> I'm going to get to that. Um, there is a question about the software. So the idea is that everything gets open. So we want to, um, as soon as we have uh, confirmation from doctors, we want to give you a complete set of informations. Actually, I would say software, because the question reads that the software might be even 60% of work. I I'm not going to go into how much work it is. In terms of human hours, yeah, more, much more. In terms of ingenuity, you need to do that. It's actually super hard to estimate. Mm, but then, yeah, we, we're gonna share like the complete set. The hardware doesn't work without the software. The software doesn't work without hardware. What would be the use of us showing you only a piece of that? Um, so as soon as we have the confirmations we, uh, from lawyers and from doctors, we wanna show the complete set. And so then there is the... And the, the, the software, well, well, one thing to, uh -huh, to, to remind, nice uh, that's, that's right. uh, one, one thing about software, uh, when we release the, the code, um, so we will be asking all the people from the world just to look for the code, just to test it and to make yeah. it better. And I mean, that's, that, that's, that's the point. Lot, that's, that's the point. The point. That's, the point. Know, that's it. I'm not sure if anybody before this crazy situation came did the work on the medical that, device. On the medical, on the medical device. device. No, we are quickly. pioneers. And that's, that's really cool. Luckily, that's there are many, many pioneers around who are trying really to do something amazing. And the thing is that when you work so quickly, even if you try the best you can, there is always a good chance that you make a mistake. So as soon as we make the code available for others, we will actually ask you to tell us that we are stupid. So we will ask you to read the code and say what we've done wrong. Um, the same goes for all other details in the design. I mean, we want to make the good thing and we want to make it accessible. So we will ask you for help on that front. Mm, uh, can I go to, the, to this nice question? Almost, almost. <laughs> but uh, to, to assure you, we've already tested the device on us. We've tested on uh, doctors and we've tested on dummies. And yes, it works. Uh, you breathe comfortably. Uh, we've tested with also with oxygen up to 70%. And we tested on asthma people. Yes, we don't give it to asthmatic people, people because they don't <laughs> give it back. I mean, we gave it to asthmatic guy, and then he was just shouting to give him more and more pressure, and he didn't want to give it back. So, so it's not only it's for risky. the COVID patients, but also for sleeping apnea and uh, asthmatic and uh, other yeah. problems with breathing. So that that's lovely. Yeah. So uh, we have a uh, great. So the, the favorite question uh, to Shimon. Yes, you, yeah, that's your question. So so uh, there was some movie where I was making uh, unnice jokes about um, science fiction from sixties. And you might have heard about the nice thing which is called Project Gutenberg, um, where they actually give you access to the books that are now, you know, no longer covered by mm, copyright. And luckily, there is quite a lot of Philip Dick mm, sitting down there 
and you can just download that legally for free and you can just keep on reading. There is loads of good books out there. I mean, Walden, Duty of Civil Disobedience, but there is a Philip Dick. And then he has those short novels, like several pages long. I, I think I've read all of them in this month. I mean, that's what keeps me alive in the evenings when I come back to, to my place and I just try to fall asleep. That's what I'm reading those days. I mean, Walden and Philip Dick. Uh, that, that's a nice combo. I do recommend Okay, so there's a question. Uh, what about the countries that will not be able to produce our ventilator? Lack of resources, lack of people, what about them? Yes, there are some countries like that. No, no, no. And we, there are two yes. things that we are thinking of. We, Bill Gates. Well, yeah. Charity. I mean, no, let's face the truth. Yeah. Those places, I mean, everywhere around the world, you have people who are intelligent enough that if they are given resources, they are able to do that. Tough thing is that there are places where, for reasons that they wanna, don't want to go through, they don't have access to resources. Well, for example, you have a, uh, refugees camps in the territories of war. And well, let's not get... I mean, there are so many tragic reasons that they might not have resources. That I, wanted, I, I don't want to get depressed again. Let's not get to that. But, 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 Sorry, i stop you. I don't want to get depressed okay, again. Okay, there are people who don't have access to resources, full stop. Uh, now there are some things that we are thinking of. Uh, those people who don't have access to those resources, in general, in most cases, they will not have access to parks as well. Let's face the, the grave truth. Uh, there are political international situations that make it impossible for certain devices and parts to be shift, shipped through the world. Now, what we are trying to do, uh, which might or might not work, uh, is to have a a device built on parts that are easy to go through borders, uh, even with embargoes. So you have, in, in, with very many parts, you have a situation that you have medical grade part and very similar non-medical grade parts. Medical grade gets confiscated on a border, medical grade sometimes doesn't. So you just use that one. Uh, the other thing is that we are in process of discussing that with our doctors. If you could possibly have some help, from the device that actually doesn't have the fancy electronics. Now, this was my first idea that I did in the cellar of my parents' house a month ago. Uh, I called it the partisan CPAP. We didn't publish that because we are not sure about it. Uh, we Only recently we got to a level uh, where we can actually be having crazy discussions with extremely skilled doctors. And we are trying to understand together with them if there is something that can be done. Now, there are possible options which you should really be thinking about, you know, last resort partisanship. Uh, in a situation where you have, you know, a car and you modify it and you make it to be CPAP, quote, quote. I'm not going to tell you what I have in mind right now. You might already understand what I mean. I'm going to tell you about it only if doctors tell me it's not going to kill people. Uh, that's the lowest resources uh, situation that we can be thinking of. But if you lack people, because the question also reads, if you lack people, sorry, if you don't have people who have basic technical skills and you are in a place that is covered by embargoes, I'm sorry to say that I don't know how to help you. So the, the solution is um, to ask the people who have money and resources to ask them for production, uh, quick, super extra production, and possibly to, to ship the ready devices through the borders. But not only devices, the medical staff needs to follow that. I mean, you need people. Yes, you need, you, need, you need doctors. I mean, the, the, the thing is that all that craze that we are going through right now, it doesn't work without people. So if you don't have... Uh, magic hands on site and if you don't have medical people on site you're screwed yeah. that's why that's why actually media uh, media coverage is helping us because we are doing something uh, that is over the politics it's over the borders and it's a global solidarity and a global unity you read Philip Dick <laughs> there is a novel about that I forgot the name <laughs> but there is one where the, the people were underground, kept by robots until they decided they don't and fight again, something like that. Read that. Mm -hmm. But but okay, there are, there are also important words from the president of the World Health Organization. He's asking 
that for the global unity, for the all humankind. So, yes, I hope the media will help us and the good people who have money will help us just to I mean, make those devices and ship them where they're, with doctors where they are needed. Yeah, that would be the ideal situation that the, the know-how, the skills, travel first inside humans and then they get spread to other humans on site. But just not to make it so grave, I mean, we are trying to, and we are already in the process of testing the ways how you could be building that on other facilities than 3D printers, including um, old style factories. I mean, luckily or not, there are, um, there are some um, countries that were buying decommissioned factories from some more rich countries that didn't want to use them because they are not environmentally friendly or nice for people to work. You could be using those facilities. I'm talking about injection molding and all that stuff. So even if you think your country is in a very bad position, it might not be as bad as you think, except for some super tough places, which make me sad. So the question is, uh, will we give a task to the community? Yes, we will. Uh, yes, we want to. We know we want to help, but it's, the project is um, at this level of sophistication right now. No, the, 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 the problem is, to put yes. it short, to put it simple, we are afraid of patent trolls. As well, as so, well but we need geniuses, actually, to, to make it better. You know, we, the, okay, simple thing that, that, that makes it difficult to work with a big group unless you are, you know, close together, um, is that for everybody you have to learn how to work together and how to share tasks. And sometimes, you know, describing how the task is going to look like takes longer than actually solving the task. We actually we received more useful advices from unprofessional community than from professionals, because sometimes professionals actually took ten, ten times longer to solve something in a professional way than we just did it by 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 working. Um, but the, what makes me reluctant to at this stage, we are going through a phase of being in a difficult spot of being very hard to help to be helped because uh, until we make sure that we understand the regulation uh, a regulation enough there is no way for us to safely ask people for help genius or not the help is needed all the time i mean it's not a question about geniusness, it's about question question how well we get along and how nicely we find a way of working together. If we reach the situation, and I hope we, we were having actually, most of the day today was talking with lawyers. Uh, I mean, they are not as ugly as I thought, but it's tough. Um, so, hi Maciek, I mean, you are not ugly. Um, the other Maciek, not the one from Bonds, the one from Law. And, uh, and then, um, you know, as soon as we get those papers straight, we will be in a position that we are not afraid of people telling us that we are actually copying somebody else's design, uh, people telling us that we cannot produce that because they patented that just after we published that, but they are quick enough and the community in the country they patented that was, you know, turning a blind eye to this or that, which happens, unfortunately. I know people who've been fighting with that. I mean, from, from my university, you know, having those problems. So as soon as we go through that, we will actually beg you for help. So, um, can you cover some technical details on the device? So, what do you want to know? I mean, uh, I'm so, not sure so what I can tell. Yes. But so, I... uh, ask, ask us questions if you know something uh, specific. But we can go quickly through the, uh, through the device. What it does? Well, let's go through the most important part. It is a CPAP. I've mentioned that word several times. I'm not sure what people we are having on the line. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure uh, who, are, who is listening to us, if those people already heard me talking these phrases or not. Um, we are delivering continuous positive pressure to our patient. I, it's going to be noisy, but not so much. I mean, uh, let's, let's just okay. let's, let's, let's show it to them, okay? It, it takes several seconds to boot up because it's in a prototyping mode right now. Just wait a sec. Um, so it's in a mode where I'm actually working on it. It's not a mode that it's going to be connected to a, to a human, unless I'm the human. Um, let me just bring it up. It so takes several seconds okay. to finish. 
So we are we are just a still a prototype, not a device that will be yeah, shipped and, and to the hospital. Yeah, and this is actually the one the that test. I'm working on in this very minute. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit noisy, but the Mateusz is working on a new housing uh, that will make the noise much 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 lower. So take a look on the screen. So what do you see here? Yeah, I'm supposed to speak and breathe at the same time. So I will briefing. You, you do you the take, talking. You take a new mask. You take a new mask. Just a second. I mean, we didn't thought that through good enough because yeah, he's decontaminating the mask with isopropanol, and we have him. Okay. So he's actually living in a funny way. If if you look at those plots long enough, you you will you will start to 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 understand different breathing patterns. But the most important, actually I see nothing. I'm, I'm not sure if, I, if you see what I want you to be seeing. Yeah, okay, here. Uh, that's a plot of pressure on his lungs. So if we would turn off the device, or if I would disconnect the device and he would be breathing through the measurement system, I'll do that now, it's gonna get loud. Just a moment to show you how it worked without the device. Oh, the high, the high. So, I mean, we, we didn't communicate good enough between us, so he stopped breathing actually. But what you've seen here, the pressure was actually going negative on him. So there was the, um, the process of damaging the lungs was starting. Um, and then um, he's breathing now in a very like big volumes of air at the same time but the device is trying to you might be hearing motor going harder and, and, and softer the device is trying to deliver air to him when he is inhaling to try to smooth out the pressure because when he is breathing very hardly very strongly mm -hmm. i think that's the english so when he's breathing very strongly he uh, he makes negative pressure on his mouth and the CPAP is trying to, to, to mitigate that, to, to avoid the damage. Um, what else? I mean, this is the main mode. Here we have another plot. Uh, stop, I'm holding the camera. I mean, we, we should have staged that before. And here is a flow estimate in liters per minute. Um, and here is internal signal that goes to motor. This is not the doctor's panel, this is my debugging panel. Um, so I, I, I think we... Uh, let's show him a little bit more. Okay, let me turn it off and let's let's talk about what was there. So it was without oxygen and it was really comfortable to, to breathe. Uh, I mean, um, I had a positive constant pressure going through the, um, to, to my lungs and the device senses when I'm exhaling it senses when I'm inhaling so uh, I can imagine me sitting like for even two weeks uh, with the full head helmet and that would be fine that would be comfortable and that's uh, when we when we're comparing this device with the devices costing like 20 30 thousand dollars which is a really really Good message. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's make sure that we, we covered everything. Um, we are recommending that for now people who are trying to build devices concentrate on the non-invasive mode because it fits most patients. Just make sure that you have a nice non-invasive that, that senses what happens with the patient to, to, to react to that. That's what we try to do and that's what we recommend others to try to do as well. Now, the next thing is, uh, I think we didn't say that clearly enough. If you have your helmets and you have your non-invasive, there is super important thing that I could have brought up when we, I was showing the, the flow plot. Uh, so, you know, the, the funny thing is that if you look like me, if you try to breathe through, 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 through those, you have something like 90%, 9, 0 percent of air just going to the atmosphere when you exhale almost everything you know passes through and goes outside and then the thing is that um, it contaminates the room you are in i mean the patient is in so if you use the helmet it actually gives you 
10 times better leak protection or better. So the risk of contamination when patient is coughing, when patient is speaking, when patient is actually even breathing, is much lower. So we recommend that you guys there around try to concentrate on non-invasive with helmets. And then the, the last thing is that remember about oxygen. We are able to go up to plus 70, I mean 70% 70 of oxygen. Doctors usually tell us about, you know, depending on who you ask, but they say that for stable conditions, 40 is about the right value. Of course, the doctor tells you the right one. Um, yeah, well, so, we so there's a question. The, there's a question the, about the pressure sensors that we are using. Um, we use. Uh, we've been testing very many of them. Uh, there are several options you can be going through. Um, I don't have in my hands right now the, exactly the ones that are there, but I can show you what was tested. So, ah, this box is empty. Uh, we are using the um, sensors. So the, the default situation is that you go for sensors which are meant by the company that produces them for a medical approach. But you might not have them. So we tested as well um, how you can be dealing with that on the other ways. And we are actually pretty positive that you could be modifying the sensors that are used in cell phones. This is a cell phone that costs $50, uh, which is super old phone. I'm not going to tell the brand right now, but you might already recognize. But the ones that have parametric sensor, if you are willing to give up a little bit of quality in terms of speed of response and go to speed of response of devices from 90s, you could be dealing with the sensors that are meant for phones. You can actually, I mean, there is a shortage of all of them, but this is the ones, those are the ones that you buy in those shops that sell you Arduino-like stuff. So there are options. Um, we're going to tell you how, what options you can be having and substitutions for what we use in, uh, later on. And there is another question about the filters. Oh, but the filters, uh, how can we adapt the prototype free to filter the air exhaled by a patient? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, if I understand the, okay. the, the person asking good enough, I mean, it seems like the person is asking what about decontaminating the exhaled air? I mean, let's let's show the... So, so, so let see. me bring it to, to the front. Okay, okay. So, so the guy is inhaling and exhaling through the mask. Or through the helmet. So you are this contaminating, hose, right? This hose, the, let's forget about contamination. Okay, the, 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 let, let, two pipes, right. This is actually two pipes. The, the blue one in the inside and the gray one on the outside. And, uh, depending on where you are, this is going to be a standard or two separate hoses going to be a standard, but both of them are valid. And then when they come to the device side, uh, you have your uh, pipe going to the patient and slightly higher uh, the pipe going from the patient and you just push both of them through the filters and then after the filter you have this or another version of uh, could you go higher actually lift yeah, your yes, hand a little bit yes, yes, okay thank you yes. uh, what you have here is the positive um, uh, and expiratory pressure valve oh, i forgot the name Anyway, uh, you, you decontaminate. The default way of decontamination is that you have your uh, filters on both inhale and exhale line. What you would see more often in hospitals is that they actually put the filter just beside the mask. Now, it might work in very many situations, but with COVID patients, in our opinion, it's not a good idea because you introduce your le extra, let's say, a resistance between your uh, system and your patient, and it makes it harder for a device be it our device or be it a professional device, it, I've measured with my equipment, I've measured also on professional devices. If you go for the set of filters as we show it here, you actually, effective mm, pressure that is being delivered to a patient, especially during inhale, which is super hard inhale, I mean, very big inhales that you are having in COVID, there is no way for you to deliver high enough pressures on an inhale um, to your patient, if you are, unless you are having super expensive device, if you are having filters uh, next to your next to your mask, this is just difficult. Uh, from physics point of view, it's just difficult. You have to have super powerful machine. This is why we opt for this approach. And this approach, um, you know, all the air goes through the filters, inhale and exhale. Of course, except for the air that leaks through, but this is 
the problem you are facing also with um, with other devices as well. That's why we say helmets um, helmets might be beneficial from the point of view of, of contamination of surroundings. That, that's true. And so, so that's true. You are contaminating the holes here, but you can actually you can wash it as as we said I mean, before. The, there are medical you procedures. Can, you can change it. You, yes, you, you follow your it. medical procedures that's you have on site right. if you have some. Um, and the same going to go for the measurement bridge we have here. Um, well, this one is a quick prototype from last night, so it's not the right material. But if you use, for example, PET, which is standard 3D printing, um, you can be decontaminating that very smoothly uh, with standard medical procedures. Uh, or you can just consider that a throwaway item, which is also a valid option. So, yes, uh, fortunately, this and this. Uh, so they are still widely, broadly available in the well, world. Well, it depends on where you are. De depends, indeed. I uh, mean, we, 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 we have to understand that in some places they that, are that's, not. But that's true. But I mean, there are no global shortages of that. that uh, so we have a question uh, for the exhale valve. Uh, can we use solenoid valve and pressure sensor? Um, well, there, is, yes. it, there <laughs> yes, are yes, options. Yes. We are, uh, at present, we are independently using three different options. One of them is what is being explained by the person asking being a solenoid valve. Now, uh, actually with the turbine device, you can achieve the nice plateau even without any valve at the end. Um, in some situations, you want to be having it easier and building just a gravitational one, which we don't recommend because it's not stable in terms of, you know, tilting and moving the device. If you have very little resources, you might go for what we have on the device. Could you show it? Yes. The, with the um, spring loading. Um, this is um, independent on gravity. Um, of course, if you have a controlled one with the, um, with, the, um, with the solenoid valve, as we have it, for example, here, you, 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 you get much better control quality. Um, it actually helps you if you want to conserve the oxygen if you have controlled one. Um, we are also experimenting on some controlled ones which are not solenoid ones. I'm, I'm not sure if I can right now explain that to you more, with more details. We're going to share that soon. Um, but there is also a way of having non-electromagnetic controlled um, exhale valves. We are experimenting on them right now. So what's the point here that we are uh, trying to to give you options. To give you options, that's the first thing. That's why you have a 22 millimeters fitting, so the standard medical fitting here. Uh, and the second thing, uh, the best solution would be cheap, available, and simple. easy to manufacture and simple. You yes. know, the, the, the drawback of this solenoid approach is that if something gets wrong, things might be wrong. If you have a solenoid, you have to control that through MOSFET or through relay. And without going into details, they have nasty failure modes. And you have to be very clever about how you design them so that you don't end up in a situation where your patient doesn't have a way to exhale because you have your exhale valve being shut. So you have to be careful about that. If you have very little resources, you actually want to go for those simpler exhale valves. As, a, as we said, we want to give you options and we will be suggesting to use the simplest, especially if you, if you are still not having shortage of oxygen. And we are actually trying to work on concent oxygen concentrator as well so that you can mitigate the, the, the shortage of oxygen. But the best would be to have a controlled one, but a soft controlled one. So the one that if the control fails in either mode also still gives you a possibility to exhale mm, so that you don't suffocate your patient in case of failure. So I think we'll be, we should finish soon. It's Actually, a, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> it's almost an hour. So we'd like to thank uh, all our donors. Uh, thank you. We've received some money, which helped us buying. We actually have enough parts to build 10 prototypes. Yes, we have enough parts to build 10 prototypes. Um, we don't have enough money to, to, to go to a hospital to test that yet, but that's... Yes, we, we, need to, we need to pay expenses for the clinical tests. So if you know some people, Will, um, who, who can and who are willing to, to help us. So go to the ventilate.org website. Um, there is a list how to, and uh, the instructions how to help us. You can send the donations on the back account. You can use PayPal 
Uh, you can you can go they'll and say and they, yeah, they know even Bitcoin. If, if you have an option, just do that. If you don't have an option, I mean, the nice words are nice enough. Actually, today we received flowers. Yes. Which, oh yes, we, we received flowers, which is, which, which is also, well. also very, very nice. Uh, yes, you can see you can see the flowers yes, on the paper there. Yes, thank you very much. Now we received flowers. Thank this, you very much. This, is, this, <laughs> this made my day actually. Mm, uh, indeed, and we'd like to once again uh, thanks for. All our team, all the volunteers. We are well um, with the the lawyers, the peer and media specialists, uh, uh, the, the managers doctors, and the doctors. doctors. We are like a forty or fifty people, maybe. Uh, well, if you include 60. all those all those all. people who help, like yes. consult and all that stuff, the, it's going to be a much larger number. It's yeah. magical. I mean, those people who came to talk with us. So, mm -hmm. guys, 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 thank you. Really appreciate that, and I think the. The patient will appreciate your work. Yeah, let's let's hope they don't need it actually. <laughs> but it's not so likely. Indeed. Well, I mean, better to be prepared. It's better to be prepared. Better to be prepared. And yeah. better. Let's let's admire the spring. I mean, spring is coming around here. It's actually here. I mean, it's super nice. It's it's sort of sad that we cannot just go around and run through the parks. Uh, but it's springtime. I mean, yeah, it's crazy situation. But let's 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 try to think it's not so bad. It's okay. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye. Bye-bye.